Today on the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast, we are talking about video marketing tips. It's important that you do video. And even if you haven't ever done it before, you're still not too late because every day that goes by, video gets more and more important to the role of marketing in your business, bringing those consulting clients to you already knowing, liking, and trusting you. So in this special interview that I'm doing with James Cooper, we're going to cover the case for video. We're going to talk about micro content and why it's important. Uh, and finally, James Cooper, my guest, is going to share some performance and production tips that are going to help you to look and feel your best on video. Take a look. Hey, it's Samantha Hartley of the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. Today, we have a special guest, James Cooper, who is going to talk to us about video marketing tips. James Cooper is a filmmaker and storytelling coach. Growing up in Hollywood, California, he's been in the entertainment industry since he was five years old. He currently has a program called Powerful Video, helping business owners get clients with video and strategic storytelling. And I insisted that we talk about the bears that sometimes appear in his California-made videos uh, and his two adorable sons who inspire him. Let's all meet James. James Cooper, thank you so much for being with me today. My pleasure. Excited to be here. So fun fact, my episode on video marketing is hot. That was the name of it. It is one of the top 10 most downloaded of my shows on both YouTube and on all the um, platforms. So video marketing is hot. And that's exactly why I wanted to have you back because in the background, you and I are constantly talking about video. You've done a special session for my mastermind group, the Profitable Joyful Consulting oh, Path to 2 Million. And um and I just wanted to really bring you on to share more tips with my audience because, you know, you know all the things. Thank you. Well, excited to be here. Yeah. A any um, Anything I can do to help, I would love it. I've, I've had the, the fortune to work with, you know, over 100 people now in terms of individual businesses and clients and stuff. And so, um, but there are a few that definitely stand out. Um, there was, uh, there's this one consultant. I mean, I've, I've worked with people who are, have brick and mortar businesses who want to get more traffic in the door. And I've worked with a lot of people who have online businesses and consultants. And I think that primarily is the clientele that I work with people who either are consultants, they have a digital online product, they teach, you know, like you do with your consulting and your programs. That's primarily the audience that I serve. But I had one, uh, I had one client a few years ago who um, was not doing video almost very, very little, if any, uh, started doing lives when lives became the trend to do lives a lot. And we started creating a, a bunch of different videos, just teaching. Uh, she was in the uh, health and wellness industry and she had a medical background. So she had some authority mm. there, but she was teaching tips and we started doing some videos and the, she was, she was doing well. She, she already had a, uh, a good mid six figure business. But when she started doing video consistently, and that's the key word consistently, where she was doing videos that were going out every single week on top of the lives that she was already doing. Um, she went from six to seven figures in less than a year. Wow. Really wow. impressive. Wow. Um, Very impressive. And yeah. And she used, she used uh, Facebook as her primary uh, social media platform and she had a Facebook community. And I think when she started her Facebook community, her group it was a free group. She was doing interviews with people's success stories. Um, mm -hmm. And she, her, her community was only a few thousand people. And it went from, from doing those videos and putting those videos out consistently, not just for her own tribe, but as marketing videos, mm -hmm. her community grew from about three to 5,000 to 60,000 in oh less than two years. Yeah. I mean, just wow. incredible growth. Um, I have another client that uh, I was working with and as, uh, um, uh, Heather, who you, who you know, uh, mm -hmm. who's in a community that we were in, uh, she doubled her sales, um, in less than six months, just yeah. by doing video consistently. So now, what video are the has specific, this incredible, yeah, it does. What are the specific things that you're showing them or having them do that makes that incredible difference? Yeah. Well, there's a, a couple things. Uh, one, the people who don't use video, there's usually mm -hmm. three big quicksand, uh, d challenges that they have mm -hmm. lack of time. Uh, mm -hmm. they look at video and they're like, this is too time consuming. I, I don't have time to create video. I don't have, I certainly don't have time to edit video. 
Um, yeah. It's just I don't have the time. The second thing is that it seems too expensive. I got to buy a bunch of gear. I got to get lighting and sound and microphones and cameras and all that stuff. And so that's another hurdle that they perceive is that they don't have the money to do the video. And then the third thing is they, they don't know where to start. What mm -hmm. do I talk about? What mm -hmm. content should I create? And that for, for me and my audience, that's usually the biggest hurdle for them because the first two hurdles uh, are one, you have this amazing device, yeah. <laughs> which now it's like, if we had this device, you know, 10 years ago, I mean, uh, it's amazing what it can do. Um, I've been, uh, I'm a filmmaker, come from a filmmaking mm -hmm. background and I've entered film competitions where you were only allowed to use your smartphone. Wow. So this tool is amazing. You can shoot in the highest quality. You can get great quality sound. Even if you don't buy an extra microphone, this takes care of it. The time factor. Um, I primarily look at reels and TikToks as my fast, the fastest way to generate, uh, you know, buzz about your services and your products to put yourself in front of new followers. Uh, and the videos are only 15 to 30 seconds long. So mm -hmm. time is not an issue because if you can create, if you can go on uh, Instagram or TikTok, you can create a video in minutes and start reach growing a following. Um, and, and not knowing where to start, that's a little bit of a more in-depth conversation. But basically I say, um, start with what you love, start with what you're good at and share lessons that you've learned. When you think about your audience, if you just share what you love, what you've learned and what you're good at, that's a great place to start, to start putting your, your original content out there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I love that. Uh, and as you know, when you, you actually made a short a uh, piece of micro content in which you gave that advice and um, the, the caption came up and I loved it so much. I screenshotted it on my phone because I was like, that is uh, just so it's like, so um, from the heart, that kind of advice. Yeah. And it really, to me, it kind of like made me think, oh, I love so many things and I love to share with my people and, uh, and all those things. And it can almost get me over the tech hurdle for, for short form content. So before That's we go into that, cause I'm so excited about that yeah. topic. Um, you're, you've already been making the case for it, but if you could in just like one sentence say to those who are like still, still, still reticent to get started, what's your most yep. persuasive argument for why now? Why now? Well, it's really, it's really why five to 10 years ago, <laughs> to be mm -hmm. honest, video <laughs> used to be a would be nice. Um, yeah. now it's, it's, it's not only a, a, a should, it's a must. Yeah. Um, if you don't have video, if you're not using video, you're, you're lagging behind all the people that are. Now, we, um, I brought some stats to show you, actually. Um, basically, landing, like this is, Wise Owl is a, is a, is a good authority on uh, marketing statistics. I really love their stuff. They say that landing page videos increase conversions by 80%. Meaning oh, that I... if somebody goes on a website, if there yeah. is a video on there, that video will help help determine whether or not they buy the product or service. Um, wow. People love videos that explain what it is that you do, why they should be with it, why should they should go with you versus somebody else. And if they don't have that video, then they're only uh, basing it on price and, you know, other factors. Yeah. So that's yeah. one thing. Um, we live in a, a video dominated uh, society. And when you just look at, at, at the marketing, like traffic on the internet, almost 90% of all traffic on the internet, just think about that. 90% of all traffic on the internet is video based. It just shows how dominant video is. Yeah. Um, and and the, the biggest reason, and I've had the, the pleasure to work uh, with this company, Google, um, mm -hmm. if you want to get your your websites and if you want to get ranked on the most powerful search engine on earth uh you need to be using video google owns youtube and youtube is the second most popular uh site on the on on the internet yeah. and so if you want to get ranked if you want to get found the the case is made just right there that you need to be using video so that yeah. google can find you um so the, all, all those things and, and more. Um, I also, because you are the LinkedIn queen, I, I pulled a stat from LinkedIn. It says uh -huh. LinkedIn users are, this is from LinkedIn themselves, from their mm -hmm. uh, internal research. 
LinkedIn users are 20 times more likely to share a video than any other type of post on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's not, it's, yeah. it's not a, a, a would be nice. It's, it's a should, yeah. it, it's, it's not a should anymore. It's a must. So it's a must. Um, you're right. Yeah. And yeah. what's amazing about that is I remember, like, it seems so recently that uh, everyone was like, I never watch a video. Myself, I was like, oh, I won't watch anything that doesn't have kittens or puppies in it. Yep. Uh, totally not true anymore. Um, uh, CEOs aren't going to watch your stupid little video. Um, do you think people in companies are watching your video? I, I, like all of these ideas. Also, um, for a long time, LinkedIn was suppressing. Like for a long time, they just wanted like a photo post and then they wanted uh, just a text post and then they wanted a, this length and all that kind of thing. And th for a long time, they were suppressing um specifically suppressing video posts. And, yep. you know, now what you're saying is that's no longer true. So it's, uh, to me, it's super, super persuasive. Now, here's what I want you to speak to. Um, yeah. As a man who has directed uh, women and worked with women clients, the hurdle is so much higher for women to be camera ready. Yeah. It's like uh, men judge women, women judge women, we judge ourselves. So uh, help us all to kind of uh, put that in perspective. Yeah, totally. I think that uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of added pressure for women on camera and being camera ready. Uh, how many men do makeup? I would say a very small percentage of men put makeup on before they go on camera. Mm -hmm. uh, I I barely shave. When I I get on the video, men rarely honest. even shave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully, uh -huh. I've showered. But I but you know. <laughs> I, I think that um, there's the need to present yourself, you know, like, and the, there's the perceived need to present yourself in yeah. a way uh, to be seen the way you want to be seen. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's not that men don't care. They just don't care as much on the visual as much as they do on the content and the, the performance, the delivery. Mm -hmm. Women tend to have more of that pressure of, I have to look good. My hair has to look good. My, my, my lipstick, yeah. whatever, everything has to yeah. be all in yeah. place. Yeah, definitely. The thing that well, I've been, go, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say that I find that, and we'll definitely talk about this with Instagram reels, which is the primary video uh, driver in Instagram and TikTok, which is the fastest growing video platform on earth. Right. Mm -hmm. um, with those two platforms alone, you're starting to see less and less of the need for women to be um, more made up, more professional looking. Now it's, it, it, that may not be the case in the, in LinkedIn for, for mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you, if yeah. you want to present yourself on a platform that is designed to be more professional, then yes, you want to definitely look, look the role that you want to be seen as, especially if you're looking for a, a new position, if you want to be seen as a, as a speaker to work with a company, you want to play, you want to be that in that part. Yeah. But the thing that's the, the thing that drives the growth of, of Instagram reels and TikTok is that it is a very, um, lack, lack of a better word, authentic, raw, natural video that people gravitate towards and they really don't care. In fact, they connect with you more when your yeah. hair is a mess, when you're just, you know, uh, coming from the gym and, you know, you, you look the way you look. It's because it's more real and people can yeah. connect with real. Yeah. Yeah. I really wanted you to say that because I've heard you say that before. And I think that's that was very impactful for me when you said that, because I was like, I've noticed that there are videos of someone coming from the gym. And as a woman, I'm like, oh, well, what does she look like without makeup and without hair and just looking like herself? And um, I've always said uh, women can get so distracted by each other's appearances that I I'm, yeah. I always say if somebody comments on how I look in a, um, in a video, I always say, and did you hear the message as well? So whether it's a positive thing and, you know, I appreciate all compliments or a negative thing, I, I think it's important for us as women to be like, no, listen to what she's saying, because we can, you know, yeah. we can tune into that. Uh, totally. So that's I, I think that's really helpful. My my big tip for women who are um, creating video is, you know, you have a daily habit with it. And personally, I'm not camera ready every single day. But on the days that I am, I can batch content, I can stack yes. content. And so I've always said to my clients, if you're in, um, if you're camera ready for a client meeting, like a client zoom, uh, 
that's two good ways to create content. Because first of all, I know you said some genius things on that call. And so you can be like, make a quick video about what you just said. Uh, yep. You know, not with any confidential information, but like this call was about this. This theme was this. These The points I made were this. Um, you can tell a short case study about that client. And then you can certainly do short form content like immediately after that call. Uh, and then, um, uh, you know, whenever you're, camera ready, like always make sure before or after that you go ahead and um, make those video days. So I have a, um, my, I have a client call with my coaching group. Uh, and on that day I'm camera ready. And I, that's the Tuesdays are when I shoot my podcast uh, in the afternoon. Yeah. We made an exception today, but I'm ready. I'm always willing to be camera ready for you. Uh, so um, it, it can, it can be easier than we're making it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't stick to a set schedule personally of when I shoot. I tend to find when I am in a creative flow that that is the opportunity for me to create, over create and create more and batch my content. So if I uh, think of an idea and there's other ideas that string along with that, then I will go, oh, I'll create another one. Oh, I'll create that one too. Uh, and I try to, I try to create as much as I can in that one yeah. sitting so that it sets me up to win later on because there's going to be days when I wake up. And I'm like, I really don't want to record today. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. those days happen up more often than I would care to, uh, to <laughs> say. But, but it's true. You you need to um, tr trying to to you know what do they say? Squeeze blood out of a rock, or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like tr trying to get something that's not there. The worst thing it, for for whether you're a writer or a content creator is to stare at that blank screen or look at the journal and nothing's coming. And so rather than try to force it. Um, it's always better to like when you are feeling inspired, when you are feeling creative, you're in that flow to just l keep going and create as much as you can. That's what I found works for me. Yeah. And do you have like an idea journal or, or a place where you're Dude, keeping all those I have ideas? Many of them. Yes, <laughs> I have like I have journals and more journals. I always keep one. I try to keep one in as many rooms as I can <laughs> because I'll get an idea and I want to write it down. Yeah. Uh, when I'm in my car, I use my voice memo in my phone mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. obviously I'm not going to pull over and write, but I will start talking. And I do, a, I do a lot walking and talking. So like one of the things that gets me in a creative space is that I live in a neighborhood that has a lot of trees and a lot of trails. And I love walking the trailers, trails every day. And that's usually when I get inspired and get ideas. Just for me, walking in nature inspires me and I will get lots of content ideas. So I mm -hmm. try to capture them right then and there. Because if I don't, by the time yeah. I get home, they're, they're gone. <laughs> so yeah. I try to capture when I, as soon as I uh, think of an idea, I try to uh, capture it. Yeah. Awesome. I, uh, I do too, <laughs> but I don't think I have a, as much of a routine <laughs> for it as you do. So I want to transition into micro content because that is yeah. of, of all the things that is hot about that are hot about video right now, micro content is especially hot. Uh, and I know there's been some controversy about, um, we, you and I had a colleague who said like, if you create, um, short form videos, you're going to attract clients who have a short attention span. And you and I had a different take on that. So would you share a little bit about what micro content is and maybe what its purpose is? It has kind of a unique purpose, I think. It does. It does. Well, you know, the short, the, the short attention span, we already have a short attention span. Human beings have short attention spans just by, by nature. And it's, it's been groomed into us through just our normal daily habits. And honestly, through television, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're in a society where people watch TVs, watch, watch programs on their phones and their yeah. iPads and at their computer. And um, I think 2020, two years ago, uh, uh, was the first year that more uh, TV shows and movies were streamed on devices than they came through a cable uh, source, a cable wow. or satellite source. Mm -hmm. So streaming has taken over traditional media. And so in streaming, you will see ads that pop up. And com I worked in the commercial industry for almost 10 years and it was short form storytelling. You have yeah. to tell a story in 30 seconds to get people interested in buying your product or service. And so that was the first time that I really connected storytelling with marketing. And then I became hooked. I was obsessed with it. So um, <laughs> even when I was a kid, I was kind of obsessed with commercials. I used to watch the Clio Awards uh, mm -hmm. and I would record it on the VCR. When we had VCRs, I used to record the Clio Awards. And for those of you who don't know what the Clio Awards, it's the Academy Awards for commercials. 
And so I used to record the Clio awards for best, you know, uh, you know, it could be a dog food commercial or best truck commercial or whatever, it, it, like all these different commercials. And I was obsessed with short form storytelling. So when, um, if you, if you remember when Vine came on the scene, Vine yeah. was a, a, a platform. I think personally, I think they quit too early because I think Me Vine too. would be incredibly successful today. Right. But Vine, seven, seven second videos, seven second videos, which was on, which was on Twitter. It was Twitter's mm -hmm. creation. Mm. And, um, and so you had to tell a story in seven seconds, which was amazing to watch they did. the creativity. <laughs> they they did. did. It's amazing. Yeah. And so um, when you that TikTok kind of took over that space. This is mm -hmm. before Reels came onto the scene. TikTok took over that space and was telling fifteen second uh, videos, and then stories came into play. And stories were also telling very uh, short clips. 15 seconds or less. Now, of course you could string clips together, but yeah. it was 15 second clips that, um, because people just have that short attention span. Mm -hmm. And so it needs to be part of a content strategy. It doesn't need to be the only strategy. There are so many different ways to reach your audience. Like for instance, podcasting or, mm -hmm. you know, doing a blog or doing email marketing. Email marketing is not dead despite what people say. It is not. People still right. do email marketing very successfully. Yeah. But the because of our short attention spans, um, Reels and TikTok and YouTube shorts had to come into the, in the scene because YouTube was noticing the, the number of the, the amount of market share they were losing to TikTok and Reels that they had to create their own micro content platform. And so I consider micro content anything that is less than a minute, 59 seconds. Because when, when Instagram first started doing video, it was 59 seconds or less. And then, you know, TikTok started doing theirs. I mean, TikTok was doing theirs before uh, before um, Reels came on the scene. But Instagram, if you wanted to upload a video to Instagram, it had to be 59 seconds or less. And so we, we, we started adopting this short form uh, style of video content. And even in Reels and TikTok, the most successful Reels and TikToks are 15 seconds or less. Yeah. The most mm -hmm. successful. You, your, your goal should be to try to get 100% watch rate. And even at 30 seconds, um, you're looking at trying to get 70% watch rate, which means people are still not watching the full 30 seconds. Yeah. So <laughs> we just live in a society where people get this, they need these little bite-sized bits of content to absorb that adds value and informs the viewer on either what they do or gives tips in these little micro nuggets. Um, and I have clients that do both long form, which they put for, which they do for YouTube, mm -hmm. longer form videos that might be anywhere between two minutes to five minutes or longer. And then they also take those, there's a, there's a strategy. You can take those longer form videos and you can dice them up into and repurpose the video, dice mm -hmm. them up into 30 second or 15 second clips. And uh, I was talking with one of my clients yesterday. She made an amazing video that was five tips for business. And I, I can't remember the specificity, but it was five tips. And mm -hmm. I said, those that's 20 reels. She's yeah, like, wow. 20? It's like, yeah, How there's 20? 20 reels. In all the things that you said, there was at least 20 reels in there. And wow. so we broke down the entire thing. And we, sure enough, we actually came up with 20 different short videos that she can mm -hmm. create or use from the video itself uh, into, into reels. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So the importance of micro content is that uh, you can create a lot of it. That's, yeah. the other, that's the other thing. You can create a yeah. lot of it um, mm -hmm. because when you're only talking about 30 seconds, you really only have about four sentences that you can say. Yeah. And, and so what I encourage people to do is think long form and then record short form. So if mm. you do have five tips or three tips, just each one of those is going to be its own reel and you create a series and you just basically say there's a three part series on X, whatever that is. And then at the end of it, you say, you, you, you talk about the first tip and then you say, follow me for more, follow me for part two. And you get people, if, if somebody sees you for the first time and it's yeah. tip number three or tip number mm -hmm. two of five, what are they going to do? If they get value out of it, they're going to go to your profile. They're going to look for the other ones. They're going to follow you. Mm -hmm. and, and then on the last one, whatever the series finale is, um, you say, this is just one thing we talk about in our program. If you'd like more information in our program, 
message me or click the link in my profile or whatever the call to action is for you to start getting them into your sales process. Right. And that is a very successful strategy. Um, My business is completely transformed when I started doing reels and TikToks because it just, it was a way to, there's, there's very few platforms out there um, unless it's like YouTube um, where you were competing with a lot of people who have been in the space already for a longer period of time. Yeah. Instagram reels and TikToks reward new creators. And so mm-hmm, they will mm-hmm. give you extra boost and extra reach when you first start out. Mm-hmm. And so when you're creating um, re- reels and TikToks, you are placed in front of people who have never seen you before. There's not, there are not too many platforms that do that. If they, right. if they, if they, if you have a podcast, they have to subscribe to your podcast yeah. unless they're searching for specific titles and they find that title in your podcast title of that episode mm-hmm. or YouTube, they're searching for a specific thing. And then you happen to come up in the search, um, reels and TikToks, the algorithm will put your content in front of people who are looking for that content who have never seen you before. And that gives mm-hmm. an incredible bonus to people who are just getting started. It's amazing. And one of the things that I think, again, we can have, we can be snobby about it, but most people are not going to watch a, a 30 minute uh, podcast episode or a 30 minute video. And if somebody says, well, I'm only making like four to five minute videos, people, I've seen it on LinkedIn. Someone will post like a five minute video. I'm like, nobody's going to watch that. Uh, what, in, unless someone knows, likes, and trusts you already, it's too much of a commitment to watch a five minute video. I know that sounds ridiculous, but no one is going to watch that. And so when we make micro content of uh, one minute or less, you know, 59 second content, I think even 59 seconds is pushing it. But certainly if you make a 20 second reel, you're going to see, you're going to get views from people who have no idea who you are, but are like, oh, this has got to be short because it's here on YouTube shorts, or I can already see the length on this from, uh, from the, the, video bar on LinkedIn yep. and they know, oh, I, I have 20 seconds and they'll watch it. So what you do with micro content is you bring people into your brand whom you yep. wouldn't already br- be bringing in because it's a lower commitment level. And they're, and you know, if you have something on there interesting and, and listen, if you're cutting the one minute or the 59 seconds out of a longer video, you know, that's going to be um, the most uh, compelling part of what you were saying. So when uh, my podcast editors uh, do this podcast, we make some videograms that we put on Instagram and they're all 59 seconds or less. And I'm, I'm confident that more people see those snippets than ever see the entire show or even hear the show. So uh, those bring people into your brand in a way that no other kind of content is going to do. It's true. It will. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. So third thing as a director, and I know that when you work with your clients, you're not just working with them on like the tech stuff and the story stuff, but you're helping them also to be more compelling on camera. So, um, what are like the top three things that you teach your clients to do so that they perform better? They, they, they look better, um, on screen, uh, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So when I work with clients, we focus on three things. We focus on uh, your messaging and your story, which which really is the foundation of everything that I teach. Because mm-hmm. if you don't have your message dialed in, it's going to be really hard to attract the people that you want. The the second piece is obviously the delivery part because um, nobody really wants if you're if you're uncomfortable on camera, we're going to be uncomfortable watching you. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. people uh, they can sense that like awkwardness and uncomfortable, uh, energy. So, um, so yeah, so you do definitely want to be more confident on camera. So there's a, a few things about that. One, uh, they're actually for those people who are really afraid of video and there are many out there that they, they don't want to be on camera because they just are uncomfortable to the point where they, um, they literally lock up and they are frozen. They just cannot bring themselves to make a video. The thought of going live makes their stomach churn, like all those things. And so there are, mm-hmm. there's that set of people out there. And um, it's important to really get down to the thought of what is going on. I know we're kind of getting life coachy here, but it's important. Yeah. You, yeah. you have to get the thought out of your head of what's really going on in your head. Um, 
and get it down onto a piece of paper because helping write down what are the thoughts that you're having as you are trying to record a video or go live, um, then once it's on paper, you can deal with them. But as long mm -hmm. as they're just living in your head, it's, it's just, they're just going to be stuck in there and you're never going to be able to move forward. It's interesting that there actually is no fear of the camera. Like in, in, in technical terms and psychological terms, there's no such thing as camera phobia or video phobia. There's no such thing. The closest fear that they have uh, come up with is one that's been around for a while called scopophobia, which is mm. the fear of being seen. Yeah. And I find that fascinating. So <laughs> the fear of being seen, it's really related to the fear of judgment and mm -hmm. the fear of not being seen the way you want to be seen. Mm. So lack of and control. That, over it. Yeah, exactly. And so you don't have control over other people's judgments of you, which honestly mm. you don't have control over that anyway, right. but it's, um, that has a lot to do with why people have that churning feel of making videos is that the fear of being seen in an unflattering way. Um, so the second part to that is I try to get my clients to fo always focus out, not in. And what I mean by that is you can't do both at the same time. You can either serve your audience and put your energy into your content and and uh, pour your passion and love for what you're talking about into the camera to the person who's on the other side watching. Or you could be thinking about yourself and like, oh my God, my hair looks horrible. I, I, I hope I don't forget my words. Like, what am I gonna yeah. say? Like all that stuff, that's all about you and it's all in your head. So you mm -hmm. have to find a way to get yourself to not focus in, but focus out. So that's the first thing, focus out, out not in. The second thing is um, to speak to the one Rather yeah. than trying to picture a, a, a huge general audience, I find it really powerful if people put their focus on a singular person that they personally know mm -hmm. that they can talk to because yeah. it'll change the energy of the way they have their conversation. Mm -hmm. So that could be a parent, that could be your best friend, it could be a sibling, it could be you know, your, uh, uh, you know, somebody that you personally know. Mm -hmm. It could be a client. Be a client. I like for it to be a perfect client, the, a perfect yeah, client that you know and love, and they've gotten tons of benefit from you, and you have totally. another thing to share with them, and you're just looking right at them. Sometimes um, we put a picture of them on the yeah. uh, right behind the camera, so you're reminded of who you're talking to. I love that. Yeah, exactly. We have, I have, I do the same exact uh, strategy as I have them, you know, p p tape something right below the lens so they can connect with it before mm -hmm. they talk. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing. But a, a third thing is physicality. The, the majority of uncomfortableness comes from how you're using your, your physical body. And it's also what makes for boring presentations mm. is how you're using your body. So, you know, if, 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 if you're like this and today we're going to have a lot of fun today and we're going to talk about some really interesting things and uh, I really hope that you like it. Like if you have that kind of energy, um, yeah. it's not going to make for a very pleasing, uh, people are going to click away right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I'm not saying it's not a performance. We're not asking you to be something that you're not, but mm -hmm. what I do encourage my clients to do and what I coach them on is what are your best qualities? Like, how would you describe your best qualities? Are you fun and you playful? Are you very endearing? Are you, um, you know, just are you, are you relaxed? There are some clients that just have a very relaxed energy about them. Whatever that is, we want to dial it up to 11. Like you remember mm. Spinal Tap, like this one goes to 11. You uh -huh. want to dial that to 11. Bring your best to the camera, whatever that is. And then the last tip that I really love is that give yourself a trigger word to get camera ready. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in, in NLP terms, we call this an anchor and it could be a physical anchor. I like a physical and vocal anchor. Like for me, my anchor is showtime. Like mm -hmm. when I hear that word showtime, my, I can feel my body change because I've anchored myself to that word. So for some people it's yes. For some people it's boom. For some people mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's all right. Like whatever their trigger word is, mm -hmm. like have a trigger word that you can use that in practice by doing it, you will always be able to say or hear that trigger word and it puts you in a specific state mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that you, when you, when you go uh, ready to record, you have to be camera ready 
right before that red light turns on. Or if you go live, there's always yeah. a countdown. There's a three, two, one. You have yeah. to be ready at three. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you've seen people on I live yes. where they're like this. Mm -hmm. And then they're like a second into the live. They're like, hey, everybody. what?" And they do that. Like, and they're like no, I saw you. Uh, I saw I where totally... you were before. Yeah. So yes, yes. in television, that's what they do to get their actors ready. Mm -hmm. And the director says action. They can't start at action. They start at the three, two, one, like newscasters. Yeah. They start at the three, two, one. They're ready to go <laughs> yeah. so that when that one goes, they're already on. Mm -hmm. So use that three, two, one as to get yourself already ready and use that trigger word to get you in that state so that when you start, you start with the energy, you start with your best self forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. James, a lot of times I see, uh, YouTube presenters and then uh, definitely in some reels. And I feel like the energy of the people is, is what I would call clown. It's like so out of, you know, over the yeah. top that I think they look like, wah, wah, wah. and when I've met yeah. those people in person, I'm like, Oh, like, why aren't you more like this? Like, this is, <laughs> this is much more kind of like whatever yeah. well, they feel like. And to me, it's sometimes been a deterrent of like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the things that they're doing. Cause I don't like, it's not me. And it's also, I just don't think it's compelling or interesting or attractive. And so yeah. what's the, what's the line between like 11, if I'm I, also, because I'm my, my thing, if you were saying my thing is I'm energetic, like I'm everybody knows I'm like, I cannot drink caffeine during a day I present because I'll overwhelm the whole audience and it's just me right. to them. So how do I be big energy without being like, buh, buh, buh? yeah. It's about being big energy while still remaining authentic, right? We've mm -hmm. all been excited. We've all been, um, you know, inspired. If, if there's any emotion that you want your audience to feel, that's why I always say never create without intention. Always have an intention of what it is that you're creating. Why am I creating this video? Why am I going live? What is the intention? And usually the intention is what you write in the caption, but it's also to have the intention that's unspoken. Like I want my audience to feel really charged for about this. I want them to feel inspired. I want them to feel my sense of fun when it comes to this, like have the intention and it, whatever the intention is, if there's an emotion you want your audience to feel, who has to feel it first? You do, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so again, it's not about performing. Mm -hmm. It's about being real and authentic mm -hmm. and find your comfort zone. Now the camera does pick up a lot, you know, whether, whether you're, you're holding your phone and you're recording or whether you're recording to a webcam or a, a nicer camera, the camera does pick up a lot. And so there is a sense of, um, bringing a little more energy to it as the lack, I don't have any other word for it. Just bringing mm -hmm. a little more energy to what it is that you're saying. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just that little bit of juice, that little turn it to 11 uh, is all you need. Um, and it's like just being really uh, ex like passionate about what it is that you're talking about. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, passion and energy is infectious. It's like mm -hmm. people love, I, you could, I could watch almost anybody doesn't matter yeah. what they're talking about. If they're really charged and excited about it, I'm ex excited about it for because of them. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, I watched a video on cryptocurrency and I really don't have a lot of interest in cryptocurrency, but this mm -hmm. guy was so excited about it and talking about it. I was like, wow, I love watching this guy. I don't even know what, yeah. what you know, <laughs> I don't really know totally. what he's talking about, but I really like yeah. his energy. Yeah. So definitely. that, that goes a long way. The mm -hmm. energy that you put out there, will determine whether or not you make that sale mm -hmm. later on down because you build that likability. And yeah. again, you're not supposed to be for everybody. You're supposed to be for the people who you can serve and you should be attracting the people you want to attract in your business. So it's not about being something for everybody. People are, there are going to be people that aren't your cup of tea and that's okay. That's exactly the way it should be. But the people right. that, that you are right for, they should see, all of you and, and like, you know, bring all of you to the table. They should be, um, they should get a sense of who you are, who I am on camera is the same person that I am. If you meet me outside of this environment and we, and we've, we've, you know, had these conversations, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. pretty much the same person, but I do bring a little more juice to my trainings mm -hmm. and the things that I coach people on because I'm so excited about what I talk about. My energy just flows that way. 
So mm-hmm. even though I am definitely, I'm more of an introvert than an extrovert a lot. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually, to be honest, I am much more comfortable behind the camera than I am in front of the camera. And that's been, even as an actor, I just always have been, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it became a necessity for me, for my business to Mm -hmm. be on camera and make videos, but I'm much rather making your videos and being behind the camera Mm -hmm. than in front of it. But it, you know, so for people who are reluctant to start, um, it's usually because of a lack of a strategy more than anything else. They don't have a strategy for feeling confident on camera. They don't have a strategy for creating content and creating a content plan. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a strategy for like how to put it all together. And what I'm here to encourage you is that it really doesn't take a lot to get started Mm -hmm. as long as you get started. And the thing that's amazing is that if you have one of these, and I most likely you do, I don't Mm -hmm. care whether it's an Android or an iPhone, this is really all you need to get started and start attracting the clients you deserve in your business. And I want to emphasize, I think also uh, having that why you're saying a strategy and the strategy is serving that bigger why, which you've been alluding to this whole time, which is like, I really want to reach and help my perfect clients. There's someone out there. This is what I always say when I'm nervous before a speaking engagement, as you were saying, it's because the focus is on me. So if I can take the focus off of me and put it onto uh, my perfect client and that there's, I always say there's someone out there who's like, in pain right now, they're struggling. Even if uh, it's they don't have problems, even if they're super successful, successful people are struggling with the gap between where they are and where they want to be, and they're not sure how yep. to get there, and that frustrates them. And so, like, speak to them, like, get your message out to them. And I also really appreciate your your distinguishing. You've used two terms, energy and passion. And I feel like when I see people in clown mode, it's because they've dialed up the energy without necessarily having a commensurate amount of passion coming in. If you tell me to dial up my energy, I'm going to be big and probably like too much. Uh, But if I uh, dial up my passion and, and what I'm talking about, then people are really going to feel, you know, persuaded. And I think that's probably the energy for a lot of us that we want to be in is our passion for yeah. helping people for our topic, uh, for what we learned today. You know, most of us are, are on fire about that stuff. So, um, that yeah. I, I really appreciate those terms from you today. Totally. Because it's coming from, a, a, you're motivated from a real place rather than yeah. trying to manufacture emotion. You know, if you don't, if you're not connected with your why, then, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a huge Simon Sinek fan who wrote the book, start with why, um, you have to have a reason why you're doing what you're doing. And if the reason is only surface level, like I just need Mm -hmm. to have more, I just need to have more energy. If that's the only intention, then it's going to come across as clownish and and for the wrong reason. But I like to think of it in even a bigger term is I like to think of like, what is the movement that you're creating? I like to, Mm -hmm. like all my clients, what I encourage them to, to dream about and think about is that how are you going to shape the world with what you do? And yeah. shaping the world can be as big as you want it to be, or it could be just a handful of people. Mm-hmm. But what is the movement that you're creating? Because if you think of your business like a movement, it takes on a totally different energy. Yeah. Because then you're creating a you're you're creating a vision, and a, a vision story is one of the most powerful stories you can tell. Yeah. It's basically letting people know where you're headed and why you're going there and who's coming with you. Mm-hmm. Because you're not stopping. This is the mission you're on. This is the vision you have. And who is coming with you? And some people, when they when they listen to you share that vision, they want to go come along for the ride. Mm-hmm. Martin Luther King is probably one of the most famous vision stories we've ever had. And so yeah. he came up with I Have a Dream, and he painted the picture of that dream. And all a vision story is is taking the future and bringing it into the present and talking about it as, as it will be. And the people who connect with that vision and the believe in that vision – they're going to join you. And so Mm -hmm. I really encourage people to just think about their business in terms of a movement, not just a business. Love it. And mine is to uh, free women consultants from toxic corporate cultures so that they can enrich themselves by doing their genius work in the world and therefore have more time freedom uh, and more life freedom for creating the life that they want. That's why I'm here and why I'm doing what I do. Uh, okay. So, uh, lightning round, if we can, yes. um, best inexpensive camera, if we wanted to get like a quote unquote real camera. If you want, okay. So best inexpensive camera is the one that's in your pocket. So this is where you start. 
And so I would, I would encourage people to not spend any money if they have this and just get started with this. You do not need to buy anything to get started. So start with this. Best and expensive camera. Um, there's a few out there. It depends on whether or not you want to, I, I, my, my, um, focus has changed away from webcams. I really mm -hmm. don't like webcams anymore. Yeah. Uh, two reasons why, um, they crap out after about a year. Even if you got the most fancy like Logitech Brio, which everyone was obsessed about, yep. um, Brio's only last about 18 months and you will noticeably see the quality completely start to go downhill. So, which mm -hmm. means you have to buy a new one every year and a half. Mm -hmm. It's much better to invest and it's like a $400 or $300 thing. It's yeah. much better to invest in a sub thousand dollar DSLR and you can purchase something like this called a cam link, which is a device that connects the DSLR to your computer uh, and you can get, uh, and, and the benefit of, of, of having a DSLR is that you can adjust the lens for the size of your room and the look that you want. So, mm -hmm. um, I really, uh, th so it depends on, um, so there's two cameras that I really like. Um, the Canon M50 is still a great camera. Um, and the, um, the Panasonic Lumix G7 is still a great camera. Those are mm -hmm. both under, I think they're on five, $600 and you Perfect. can get, and it comes with a lens as well. So those are two. Mm -hmm. And then if there's one other brand that I would include, uh, the Sony ZV one is another great uh, camera. And if you are in a room that is darker, uh, mm -hmm. Sony makes the best cameras for low light. So if you yeah. happen to be in a room that is a lot darker, um, I would suggest going with Sony. They have great autofocus and they have great, um, they're great for low light. Super. If your microphone broke and you had to go buy a new one today for, you know, <laughs> Under five hundred dollars, and ideally under two hundred, oh. would you get? Oh, nice! It's like I was, I was like going to say a hundred under hundred dollars. I was like, oh, under five hundred dollars. The best mic that I, I don't own it, but I've used it that I really want. Um, DJI. Mm -hmm. Um, they have a package right now that I am like drooling at because I, I, they came out with their new uh, gimbal. They have the new, oh. uh, their new gimbal, the Osmo Six, I think it's called. And it's a, it, those of you who don't know what a gimbal is, it's a handheld, almost like a selfie stick that you put your phone in and it keeps it like, it keeps it perfectly level. So it's great for walking and talking and you don't get um, all jittery. It also has a little stand so you can put it on a table. So they have a new package that includes the microphone um, and, uh, it's like $450. It's, it's amazing. Yay. So, and the new, um, the new gimbal, the, the six has an extender. So it's almost like in a selfie stick. It's really, really cool. I really want it anyway. <laughs> that so was you that, geeking out on equipment. I love that. Exactly. That was... <laughs> I'm going to go on Amazon right now. Um, so, so yeah, but even if you didn't buy the gimbal, the, um, microphone is, uh, I think the microphone alone is like $300 and it's a mm -hmm. great kit that you can either clip onto your, uh, shirt or blouse or jacket and then you can plug the other end directly into your phone. And that's now, a DJI brand? Yeah, yeah. Never heard of them. DJI, they make they they were famous for making drones. So if you uh -huh. buy a drone, most likely it will be a DJI drone. DJI. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. they're a really big company and they're probably best of breed when it comes to drones. But Super. also their um, gimbals are really great. And now they have this microphone that is really, really good. So that would Super. be my favorite. If you're, if you're going to look at something else, uh, the Rode, a uh, wireless, uh, go microphone, um, you can buy those and that can either plug into your computer and the other end, you know, clip on, mm -hmm. or you can buy the actual lavalier attachment, which is the little microphone that can clip on. And that's like an extra 90 bucks, but that package also will cost you about $300. Mm -hmm. Super. Yeah. Um, I have this little Samson meteor, which, Great. uh, I bought for yeah. like 80 bucks or something like that. And it is to me, perfectly acceptable sound quality. Uh, yeah. but I do know some people who have, uh, the nicer quality ones and they just sound luscious like this. So, yeah, of course, just the thing that's important about sound is that, um, sound works off uh, microphones work off of proximity. Um, it doesn't matter how fancy the microphone. I mean, yes, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can get thousand dollar and $2,000 microphones but they're still not going to work as well if you're too far away from the microphone. Like mm -hmm. I have a microphone that's on a little boom here, and obviously I'm going to sound differently if I get closer to it than when if I yeah. walk away from it. 
Mm -hmm. um, the thing about a lavalier mic is that it's always going to be six to you know six inches from your mouth. And mm -hmm, that's what mm -hmm. makes microphones work. If you look at podcast microphones, I don't know where mine is right now, but if you look at podcast microphones, there's a reason why they're in their face yeah. is because these are microphones that are designed to be speaking really close, like two inches, three inches from the microphone. And that's why they work and they sound so well. Mm -hmm. So you just got to decide to look at your environment. The benefits of a lavalier mic is that you can move around and talk and the sound is going to stay consistent. Whereas if you have a microphone that is either um, hanging above you or on your desk, if you turn your head, you're not going to get the same sound quality. So um, whatever mic you purchase, you just have to decide, am I going to stay in one place and I'm going to record everything from here? Or am I going to be walking and talking and then I need something that is always going to be clipped and close to me? So mm -hmm. that's what awesome. you have to decide. So what is the best lighting that yeah. is not difficult and easy to use and not yeah. super expensive? Yeah, great. So again, you can get lighting kits for less than $200 that are amazing. Lighting is probably of all the things that I, you would spend, lighting is probably going to be the cheapest actually, because two reasons. One, you can use natural light. You can put your desk or wherever you're filming towards the light. Never put your back to a lighting source, a natural lighting source, because you'll look like you're in the witness protection program. So you always, if you are going to have um, light coming in from behind you, that means that the light source in front of you has to be uh, just as strong, if not stronger. Um, but another thing, so, so as far as um, lighting kits, like you can get something like this. It's a flat panel LED. This is made mm -hmm. by Savage. This is the one that I like to use. But there are other kits that are like this. You can just look up flat panel LED. The great thing about LEDs is that they don't use, they use very little power and some of mm -hmm. them can be, you know, incredibly bright. The thing that you want to look at, uh, you, you, again, you want to look at two things. You want to have uh, ones that have a dimmer switch so that you can control the amount of light. And they also t uh, look at the ones that have um, a temperature uh, switch, meaning you can change it from a warm color white to a more, uh, you know, daylight bulbs to more like uh, sunlight, indoor lighting. So there's like a, um, tungsten lighting is like more of an orangish, like warmish tones. And mm -hmm. then uh, when you go to cool, it's a much more a white uh, tone. So depending on your skin tone, you want to adjust the lighting that, you know, suits you perfectly. So mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm. get like one, warm. that's what I would look at. And uh, you can buy kits that come with two lights for, you know, less than $200. Super. Um, so, that is yeah. awesome. Viltrox. And I love that's, that's the one I recommend. Viltrox what? is a great V I L T R O X. They have a great two lighting kit that I think is like $130. It's great. Super. I love that because I fight, I, uh, I, I shot natural light for, light for the longest time. And then, you know, I would fight like the sun in the winter and then too bright here, too, yeah. too little light there. And then sometimes I'd be at the end of the day and I would need to supplement light. And then it was, you know, always the fight. As I've said, I have a, a sheet over a ring light here and I'm afraid of a fire starting while we record. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that was a, your great advice to kind of like dim that yeah, thing. I'm not a fan of ring lights. I just have to no. say like, I, yeah. I, I know they serve their purpose and I, I, mm -hmm. I appreciate people who use ring lights, but mm -hmm. I'm just not a, first of all, if you have glasses, you can't really use them. And second right? of all, even people who use ring lights, I can see in the pupils, these little alien circles. And it just, for me, it's a pet peeve. I just don't really like it. So that's why I recommend if you don't throw away the light, it's still usable, put a white yeah. pillowcase over it and you got a great light. Uh -huh, but a fire hazard. <laughs> yeah, fire hazard. You watch out for that. All right. So you're not a fire marshal, but you are a super helpful resource. I've just loved what we talked about today. I mean, we covered performance, we covered um, marketing, and we covered technical stuff, which is all within your wheelhouse. And I find that amazing that you are one person who knows all these things. So I really appreciate your the arts background that you come from, because I come from that same background. And I want to have that infused in our work. I don't want it to be too business. So I'm just so happy to have talked to you about this today, James. If people People want to find out more about you where should they go yeah totally so um the best way is uh instagram um you can find me i do a lot of these little trainings uh which you can sometimes see on uh facebook if i do them live training uh talking about micro content so you can always follow me on instagram or TikTok uh at james cooper films um and this basically reach out the two main things that I do is I help do one-on-one -on -one consulting with people. So the best thing to do is just message me and then we can book a quick 15 minute call, see what you need, see how I can help you. 
and uh, you can either work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I also have a new program, which I'm actually really excited about, helping people with reels and TikToks and growing their audience with micro content. It's finally something that I've wanted to create for a long time. We just finished the beta version of the course and we're getting ready to launch next week. So if you want information about my my course, it's a, it's a done with you course. So you get the videos, but you also get the group coaching with it for 12 consecutive weeks. And uh, yeah, if you'd like more information, just message me about the course and I'll give you all the info. That would be great. I have a client who went through your beta and loved it. And it's gotten her a way bigger increase in views on LinkedIn, which is a hard place to get views. Uh, and um, she's just raved about it. And I, it, I have a feeling awesome. it's getting her leads as well. I haven't spoken to her about that, but I, I do know that her reels are super entertaining and, and just really fun and they are. professional, yeah. by the way. So anyway, I thank you for helping her and us today. And we will see, um, see your reels on the Instagram. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for watching. I'd appreciate it if you'd like this episode. And if you enjoy the show, why not subscribe? Be sure to click the bell to get notified when new episodes drop.